In Luke 14, we see these great multitudes following Jesus. And he turns to them and he tells them, if anybody really wants to follow me, then you've got to forsake everything. Jesus often uses hyperbole. A hyperbole is an intentional exaggeration. And he says, unless you hate your father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and your own life also, you cannot be my disciple. Of course, this leads to the next question, what is a disciple? A disciple simply is a follower of Christ. It's a person who believes in Christ and therefore he or she follows Christ. It wouldn't really make sense if we were to say we believe in Christ but yet we don't want to follow Him. So we see that discipleship really involves faith in Christ and vice versa. True faith in Christ means a life of discipleship. Jesus goes on to say that whoever does not bear his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now there were many disciples in the time of Christ. Uh, the Pharisees also had disciples. And unlike the Pharisees, Jesus chose his own disciples. Usually a disciple would choose who they wanted to be taught by. But Jesus would call people. He would call and choose disciples. And he even tells us, you didn't choose me, but I've chosen you. At the same time, we realize that the call to follow Jesus is an invitation that we must respond to. And Jesus gives us a strong admonition by telling us, you must count the cost. He gives the example of a builder. He says, if a person wants to build a tower, like I'm standing in front of this huge tower, and a person lays a foundation, but they run out of money. They can't finish the tower. Years ago, I was ministering in the countryside of Korea, and we came to a place where they had begun construction on this magnificent hotel with an absolutely gorgeous view, but the builders, unfortunately, had run out of money. And now, what should have been this magnificent hotel was now a ruin. When I saw that hotel, I immediately thought of this teaching of Jesus that how sad and how tragic a person has a great vision, they start out well, everything's going according to plan, but you're unable to finish. Jesus went on to say that when people see it, they will mock that person, saying, this person began to build and was not able to finish. And that's exactly how we felt when we saw this hotel. We, we thought, wow, somebody spent a lot of money for nothing. Jesus also gives the example of a king going to war against another king with 10,000 soldiers, but the other king has 20,000 soldiers. And he says, this king, if he realizes his 10,000 are unable to defeat that 20,000. He's going to have to sit down and make some terms of peace. So Jesus gives us these two examples, one involving building and the other involving warfare. I believe Jesus is giving these two examples intentionally to tell us that a life of following Christ involves building and it involves warfare. Each of us is building something with our life and each of us have to contend with obstacles toward those goals that we're seeking to achieve. The goal of the Christian life is to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's really what the life of a disciple is. As we are endeavoring to follow Christ, we've also got to come to terms with what are we able to do? Are we able to pay the price? We have to count the cost. Jesus tells us that after we've counted the cost, we need to forsake everything and follow Him. The reason why he tells us to first count the cost is not to give us an option out, but it's so that we fully realize what a commitment it involves to follow Christ. Jesus uses the most precious, intimate relationships that are humanly possible. Mother, father, sister, brother. Our family relationships are usually, in a normal, healthy family context, the most intimate, your closest relationships. And he uses these most intimate relationships to make a very important point that Jesus Christ must become our most intimate relationship. In fact, compared to the intimacy that we experience with others, whether it's family or friends, Jesus Christ demands first place.